Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part four of my uh, build of the Monarch Fly uh, figure from the classic uh, science fiction film, The Fly from 1958. Uh, a lot of progress on this build. Uh, I will be completing the transporter and getting the uh, diorama base started that the transporter is on. Uh, and I'm also working on another figure to, uh, to be accompanying the fly. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm working on the top of the transporter cabinet and I already had this piece cut out as I showed in the previous video and I drilled the little three holes here to accommodate the cooling racks posts that come up and meet with it. So this is actually going to be the inside, the bottom. So it's going to be up this side here. I took some, some basswood strips and I cut them out and I glued them all around the perimeter to make it that thickness. Now, this one, unlike the bottom, is gonna have styrene on the top and styrene on the bottom. Uh, so what I might have to end up doing is putting some kind of supports in here just to kind of keep the plastic from sinking down inside. I'm gonna still play with that. Uh, I also drilled some holes in the back and this is going to accommodate some, where do I have it? Do I have it? Right there. No, I don't. Okay. Anyway, it's uh, some styrene tube that'll fit right into that. And what these are going to be is this is the side that has the the metal bars, the metal rack with the, the cables coming down. So these cables are going to feed into here and then they're gonna come down the side of it. So I wanted to have the holes drilled through for that to be accommodated. One other thing I did is I decided an easy way to put some lights in the top. Nothing really fantastic, but just something cool. So I drew out this grid and I drilled holes through those nine, is it nine? Yeah, nine intersections. So I have nine holes and it's big enough to fit some fiber optic that um that i have i keep losing it anyway it's pretty thin where'd you go well, of course everything goes missing but anyway so some fiber optic and i have a um i have a flashing fiber optic tube that's cool white and I can just run the fiber optics all into that and have that sitting up here. And then what I figured I would do is just the wires for it. I will just run out of one of these down through the, the wire bundle. It'll be nice and nicely conspicuously hidden. All right. So what I'm going to do right now, I think I'm pretty well ready to go as far as the different holes I need to be drilled in this part. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down onto this piece of styrene, which I have drawn out. I'm just going to use some 15 minute epoxy to do that. Give me enough time to work with it. And it dries fairly quickly. That's what I like about it. I use that to, to glue these on to this as well. I could use the Aileen's uh, foam and felt glue, which I've often used, but that just takes a lot longer to glue to dry. So let me do that. Once that's done, I can then re-drill these holes coming down through the styrene. And again, remember, this is going to be the inside, so you're going to have the lights shining down in the inside of the cabinet, plus you're going to have these holes opened up for the cooling racks to go up inside. So, all right, let me get that in place, then I can start working on the side pieces and the top as well. So I decided to, uh, to add a little different kind of paneling on the inside where the lights are. So I cut out a square and I use this tile pattern here to put into the middle. This will just be the part that's gonna be inside of the cabinet. 
So this is in the, in the interior. You're gonna have the walls coming around the edges of it to hide that, those gaps. And then this part's just gonna be smooth. <coughs> in addition, I went ahead and put a, um, another piece of the, um, the detailed styrene onto the end here where the, the pipes or the, the wire bundles are going in and I glued those pipes in place. And that's all dry. So that's ready for that part of it there. So what I want to do is get the other edges done because I want to get, before I put this piece on, because I'm going to have the lights and the fiber optics in it, I'm going to have to get this painted first because I want to get this painted before I put the fiber optics through here and mushroom them and glue them in place. Uh, so, so what I want to do, if I at least get all the sides done, I can get that painted. I still have to trim off those edges, you can see. Um, I can get that painted uh, the same steel color. I'll paint it black and then steel, like the rest of the, the bottom is, that kind of a thing. And then once that's done, I can get all the rest of the wiring done. I can get the, the uh, cable bundles glued in place. And I'm actually going to run the um, power wire through one of these down bundled into one of the bundle wire bundles so it'll be nicely hidden and then come out the back so I can put power to it um, so here are the um, the ones that I have these are for the fiber optics so I have some solid lit ones and I have some flickering and I have some blinking so probably gonna go with the blinking. I have just the cool white, then I have blue, but the blue isn't really blinking. It's, it's flickering, so it's not quite what I wanna see in there. Uh, here is a piece of the fiber optic. So this is, uh, come on, focus, one millimeter. So it's one millimeter thick. And I have some other strands of it as well. Um, the harder part is, you know, can't bend it too much, but I want to get it down in there and bent down and then all together into one of these uh, fiber optic lights and then just run one set of wires down through probably the center one. And then I can get and put the, the, the ceiling on it once I get everything all painted, so. All right. So I'm working on the ceiling, the very top of my, well, I guess this is the ceiling or the top of the cabinet. So this is mostly done. I did some puttying around the edges with some Bondo spot putty sanded it pretty smooth i still want to get maybe like a a coating of primer on that just to take a look at it and then i'll see if i need to do any more but that part's ready to go for now so i'm working on the ceiling i cut out this part the top of it and it's just a thin piece of styrene and then i glued on these uh, thicker ridge pieces and then this really thin ridge piece in between it and I have some photo etch parts that I cut off uh, that I had from the Discovery, which I'm cutting out a few pieces just to kind of give it the idea of some vents. What I'm thinking of is gluing these down, putting around some styrene strip to, um, to finish it off. Give the idea that these are vents, because this thing's pretty thick. This is just venting off heat, that sort of thing. And I have some other little vents to put around it. All right, so I'll get those glued in place. And then that'll be ready to go once I'm, I'm not going to get this painted until I get it glued onto the top, the rest of the top. But I'm going to get most of that painted, the sides and the bottom, so I can start putting in the uh, fiber optics and the lighting for that. So, all right. So here's the completed top that I did and I added the extra detailing in. Um, not really happy with it. It's a lot going on. It's way too busy for being on the top of it, because this is what you're gonna see. This is gonna bring your eye to it and it's gonna be a lot more noticeable. And I think it's gonna detract away from the rest of the transporter. So 
I want to simplify it a lot more than this piece. So I went ahead and I traced out another piece of, uh, of the styrene and I'm working on creating something a lot more simplified, as I said. So here's the new sheet. So the only thing that I've done on this one, and I might do one other little thing, but I created these little vents or louvered vent sections. I have two of them and I traced out the area where they're gonna fit. And uh, I'm gonna cut these out and glue them on the inside. So you'll just see this underneath and probably put like a frame around it. Um, the only other thing I might do, I'll think about it, I might put like a little vent up here or something, but maybe not. I just wanna keep it simple. Just a little bit to add a extra detail to it, but nothing, nothing as elaborate as the other one that I did. So let me go ahead and work on those. And then what I'll do is I'll get this glued on to the other completed part of the ceiling before I get it painted in order to match. Uh, and I, I also completed the, um, the lighting for the other parts. Let me go ahead and show that to you as well. All right, so here is the painted uh, other part of the ceiling. So this would be upside down like this. I have all of the uh, fiber optics put in and glued in with some five minute epoxy and that's set up. There's a little light. It's a uh, blinking cool white, as I said. I still have to get the wires finished off and put into um, one set of wires that are gonna come down through the, the wired bundles. Plus those have to be glued in through those little tubes right there as well in order to, um, to have those in place. And, um, but otherwise, this part is all done. Uh, so let me go ahead and put a battery on that and I will show you what that looks like. Might be a little hard to see in the light here. Sorry, I'm just getting the, there we go. No, not too bad. Okay. So it's blinking pretty fast. Now this will be in the inside, of course, and hanging down, so it'll, it won't be in direct light, so you'll be able to see them a little bit better. Just a little added, added uh, lighting effect going on. It wasn't that big of a deal to do, so. Okay, so this part's all done. Let me go ahead and finish up the other part for the ceiling, and then um, get those wired bundles glued in place and then I'll be able to get this part finished up as well. All right, so a lot more work on my ceiling part, getting really close to sealing this up. So I completed the, the roof, and as I said, I wanted to go a simpler method. I really like how that turned out. So these look like two low profile vents that are louvered and they're both facing outward from the top and there they are underneath. So I'll get these painted before I put glue this on. Uh, probably paint similar, paint the black and then paint some metallic. I'm thinking of maybe a little different metal on it, maybe like a gun metal or something, we'll see. Or even paint it with, a, with the same steel but then make it dirtier because it's a vent it would be venting whatever heat that might heat it up um, so a lot more work in here i put a bridge across here to support that in the middle and i'm working on putting some of this uh l bracket onto the sides because the the lip the lip of this is is kind of an edge but it's a little too low so i want to bring it up just a little bit so the edge matches up when I put that top on and I have a space in there for the two things to go through. Uh, so I attach the wiring into this braided wire right here, which then comes down and I intertwined it with this center one. You can see, bring it up here. Okay, there it is right there coming out. I gave myself some extra space and I tested it, made sure that it worked. Um, so because I, di I didn't have the right size of the shrink tubing, so I just used some electrical tape. You can see it right there going down through it. 
it goes through the center one. And then I glued these all in. So these are all five minute epoxy in, as you can see. They're just hanging out the back. But you can still bend them because they are wires after all. Just solid wire inside. So once I glue this on top, I'll attach them onto that side part with the bars. And then have it come down and it'll go off towards the back. And you won't see it. Or possibly down through the floor. We'll see. But um, what I want to do is finish getting this edge cleaned up. Getting pieces all along here with this L bracket. I have this piece along the edge over here on the end. And so that way then this whole flat piece will fit on there. Do a little bit more trimming to get it to fit right on the edge. Uh, but I should be able to do that and then I'll be able to glue it on. Plus the fact that once I get this glued on, this will be plastic, styrene, this will styrene, styrene all around it. So I'll be able to glue that on using just your traditional glues for the styrene rather than using 5-minute epoxy. Uh, but I'll use 5-minute epoxy to glue these down onto the wood. Like I did with these other things. Alright, so once I get those in there, I get that little bit painted. I'm going to go ahead and get that on. And then once this is all sealed up and then I clean up that edge along it, I might have to do a little putting. Then I can go ahead and just mask off the parts I don't want to be affected, like these cables down here. Um, I can even mask off the sides a little bit. Don't really have to because they're going to be silver as well. But um, then get the whole thing painted with the same steel that I have on the bottom with the rest of it. So, okay. And the lights are ready to go. So um, let me finish working on that and we'll get this top sealed up. All right, so here is the top glued on to the, um, the top section glued onto my transporter top. Went on pretty good. Got a pretty good uh, measurement around the edge. I am going to fill that in with some Bondo spot putty. But it's nice and level and flush, which is good. So in the end, I don't want to see any kind of a seam or gap there. I just want it to look like one seamless piece. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and use this Bondo Spa Putty. Just do it around the whole entire edge here. And then uh, once that sets up, go ahead and sand that down with some various grits of sandpaper to get a nice smooth finish. Fix up any issues along the side here. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and paint. So I'm going to mask these off. Just to keep those the the um, uh, Tamiya gray metallic. I don't know if I mentioned that, but these are painted gray metallic. And I painted black down inside so that you wouldn't see anything down in there. And then um, I want these to stand out a little bit from the rest of this, which is going to be the, the same steel color on the side. All right. Just give a little bit more character. Uh, and then I'll be able to get this finished up. And I'll be ready to start looking at getting this all assembled. This will be the last piece to the transporter. Once this is done, then I can start getting the bottom glued onto uh, the beginning of the base for the diorama. And then start building the walls up and then putting this up on top, getting the wires all put in. So, okay. And here is a mock-up of all of the parts for the transporter. So the parts are all completed. I just have it taped together right now. I want to get the base attached onto the plywood before I start gluing anything together to make it more stable. But looking really, really sweet. Quite awesome. All 
right, so I 3D printed a, a really cool figure that I got from an online source called My Mini Factory. So I wanted to add a little bit more to the display, to the diorama, and I really wanted to have a figure of his wife screaming when she first sees that he's the fly. Uh, throughout most of the film where she's interacting with him, he has a hood over his head. Um, at one point, he, and he has his, his one fly hand inside of his coat pocket. But at one point, it, it, he, he forgets and it comes out and she gets scared. But towards the end of the film, uh, he goes through the transporter one more time at her insistence, thinking that it will fix him. And when he comes out, she pulls the hood off and, of course, sees this creepy-looking, quivering fly face. So she starts screaming and backing away from him in terror. And then she faints. Um, and at that point, that's when she agrees to help him to uh, to go into the machine and crush him because there's, she understands, like, there's no coming back from this. Um, so... <clears throat> I had gone online. Well, first I looked around and I tried to find uh, a figure because I know a lot of times companies sell cast resin women that are from like the 50s or oftentimes you'll see one like the uh, Creature of the Black Lagoon. Uh, I believe there's a figure of him holding the woman in his arms. Um, so I didn't know if there was something out there. So I went and tried looking for that on like Call TV Man and other sites and didn't really find anything. So I thought, well, maybe it's something I can 3D print. So I went out and I searched a couple of different things, like 50s, Screaming Woman, uh, I, Dam's Own Distress, that kind of thing. I ended up finding this one on my mini factory, as I said. And it's, it's actually supposed to be a figure from the movie Psycho, which came out in 1960 from Alfred Hitchcock. And it's supposed to be Marion Crane's sister, Lila Crane, played by Vera Miles. And it's the scene towards the end when her and her boyfriend go up to Norman Bates' mother's house to try to find her. And down in the basement, they find the mummified remains of his mother. And she starts screaming and Norman Bates comes running in in the dress and the wig and the boyfriend subdues him. Um, but that's the scene that this is from. So this is actually a set of figures and it has her and of course it has all the other ones too. It has Norman Bates and uh, Marion Crane in the shower and it's they're supposed to be really tiny. Uh, I guess they're supposed to be for game playing and there's actually different things you can use to build the shower and parts of his of the the Bates mansion or house that kind of thing. So I had to Dow in the size, and and I made three different versions, of course. First one, way too small. And it's hard to do because it's, it's hard to get the measurements just right. I was trying to lay it down because she has her arms moved in different places. I was trying to lay her down on the build plate in the software and try to get a good, a good idea. The first one, of course, I was way off. The second one was a little closer, but still not quite right. So I finally got it on the third try. But this is 500%, 600%, and finally 700%. So I upscaled the, the original file 700%. So the, the one that they give you is really tiny. It even has these little round bases that you put them on because they're supposed to be for gameplay, that kind of thing. So, But a really nice, really well done figure. And it's all one piece. But really nice detail. The face looks really good. I love that pose with her hands in that, in that look. It's really cool. Her dress. She has a belt on and buttons. Very nicely done. And I, I hollowed it out and put some drain holes in it. So I could make it lighter. Otherwise that would be a lot of resin. But no seams to worry about because it's all one piece. I just have to clean up some of the support connectors. Get it nice and smooth and get her painted. But she's going to be perfect. So she's just the right scale now for the fly. And uh, I think that'll really add to this diorama quite a bit. 
and I'll look at some screenshots and get an idea. I think her dress was something in like a gold or a yellow kind of a, a look. So we'll play with that and see what it looks like. She was a redhead, I believe, in the film, whereas Vera Miles was blonde. But uh, I'll probably end up doing her as a redhead and then making her up. Um, but what I'm trying to do now is position them onto a piece of plywood that I'm ultimately going to use as the, the base of the diorama. So let me go ahead and um, get those other parts and I'll show how that's going to start to look. All right, so I'm trying to position the figures and the different elements onto the diorama base. So I have this two foot by one foot piece of plywood. I'm wanting to keep it about a, a one foot square. So here's a line cutting it in half. And um, I have the transport, transporter base right back there, as you can see. And the only other part from the base that I'm going to use is the little control panel. When I'm going to paint it up and fix it up and have that back there, I think. I'm also going to scratch build a little bit of a section of machinery in the back. That's going to be behind it as well. So I played with it a couple of times. Uh, it's the, the transport is fairly large, of course. So it's going to take up a good chunk of space. So what I'm trying to do is figure out, and I want them in front of it, of course. <clears throat> I don't want them to be behind it, of, or, you know, anything like that. So the idea is that he emerged from it and she pulled off the cloth and he was still the fly. And that's why she starts screaming. Now, in the film, we're actually in the other room where the transporter is reversed because the two transporters are mirrors of each other. Uh, but I'm not really doing that part of it. He did follow her back into this room, so it makes just as much sense that, that she's in this room as well. And then she faints, of course, and he picks her up and throws her onto a couch that they, he has down there. So... Um, so I kind of like that. I kind of like those poses where she's recoiling in fear and screaming. And the, the typical pose with the hands in the air. And the only way it would be better if she had her hand across her face while she was screaming. <laughs> but I think that looks pretty cool. And then I wouldn't really want him facing her necessarily, but that's kind of a good angle. So he's just, you know, there looking somewhat menacing, even though he wasn't really trying to harm her or anything like that. So, okay. So I'm measuring this out because the next thing I have to do is I have to cut out the part of the wood underneath the transporter so I can accommodate the wiring to come underneath uh, that powers the lights. And so I do some lines around it. And what I'll do is cut the board this way as well. Um, and then that way I can, I can then begin building the transporter. Uh, what I'll do is put down, I have some, some patterned styrene that I'll put down as the flooring. Once I get that in place, I'll glue the base of the transporter. And then once that's solid, then I can go ahead and glue the walls onto it and get the whole transporter built. So it's on a nice solid base. It isn't going to fall over and get damaged. Uh, and then work on the rest of the machinery. All right, and then the figures will go on pretty much at the end. I'm thinking about putting magnets in their feet or at least some type of uh, styrene rods, not styrene, um, like brass tube or brass rod. So they'll be removable if I wanna transport it. Uh, and that would be pretty easy to do just drill some holes down through it. It isn't just gonna be the board, I'm gonna have it raised up. And just like I did with these parts and the ceiling part of it, I'm gonna have some, some wood stripping glued underneath it to raise it up just a little bit. And then um, I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna make that look on the sides to finish it, so. Okay, all right, we're coming along nicely.
All right, so I didn't take a lot of pictures as I did the process. I don't think it's really necessary. I can explain the materials that I used on here. So I had already shown uh, the wood, the piece of wood that I was looking at. I did decide on how to cut it out. I ended up making it 13 inches this way by 12 inches. Well, it was already 12 inches that way. I couldn't change that. Uh, but I made it a little bit wider this way just to give a little more room for the figures to, to fit on here. And um, I went ahead and measured off where I wanted generally the, the platform for the transporter to be. And I cut out a square. The square is not the size of the entire transporter, of course, because I don't need it to be. I just need enough room underneath to be able to access wiring, which you can see. And, um, and then I glued this, uh, I believe that's 3 8 thickness. Yeah, I have it written down right there, actually. 3 8 3 8 thickness of square tube on the three sides, the sides, the two sides in the front. I didn't put it on the back because the back, I'm going to end up having the leftover piece of wood, plywood, at least parts of it, is going to be back here to support the back machinery. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do that, so I didn't put anything back there just yet. Um, and then I went ahead and um, glued down this patterned styrene sheet. I wanted to try to find some of the ones I've used before, like for my um, uh, classic, I'm sorry, my remake of the Thing diorama that had some larger panels, but I couldn't find it. So I ended up just using this. This was the best thing I could see. It's hard to really see the floor in the film. It looks like it's just like a typical concrete floor in a basement. This is what he had built up as a basement. Um, but this will work. It's just gonna, it's kind of a cobblestone pattern. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. You're not really going to notice that as much. Uh, and then this is the seam down the middle because there are two sheets. The sheets are 12 inches by, I guess, about 6 inches. So I had to use two of them. And it's hard to get the seam just perfect when you glue it together. So I just put this very thin, flat uh, styrene stripping up the middle. And I put it up the edges to give it an idea that this is just part of the flooring. That would be natural. Um, so, and then on the, um, on the sides in the front, I cut out styrene in order to put on that and finished it off. It's on all sides. All right, so at this point, before I can glue anything down for the transporter, I have to get this painted because it would be a lot harder to try to mask off the transporter base and all that other stuff. So I'm not gonna do that. So what I wanna do is get this painted. I'm gonna put a coating of fine surface primer on first of all, just so I can see if I have any things I need to fix up or clean up, and then I'm gonna start painting it. I'm kind of thinking of a bluish gray for the floor, maybe a dark gray around the edge just to kind of give it a little bit of a different look to it. Uh, but the floor itself isn't the main thing you're going to see. But I just want something kind of neutral. So I'll kind of work on that. Once I get this painted, then I can go ahead and glue down, first of all, the bottom of the transporter. Get all the wiring set up. And then uh, I'm going to have to have the batteries in the back. I don't have enough room under this to accommodate like a double A battery pack, which is what's gonna power the transporter. Um, so I'll have to figure out how that's gonna work. I am, like I said, gonna have machinery back here. I'm actually thinking about maybe having the batteries hidden in that, because I have that little control panel that came with the model. It's gonna go back here. I could easily adapt that to have a battery in it to hide a, two, a double A, there's plenty of room in that. So we'll see. I'll play with that a little bit. 
Uh, but once I get that set up and get this on here, then I can start working on getting the rest of the transporter glued together. So, all right. All right, so I finished painting the floor for my diorama. So I have the edges in a, um, what color was that? Field blue. And then I painted the main flooring with a light blue. These are both Tamiya. And then once those fully dried, I taped off the stripping that I put on here to hide that seam and also along the side and I painted it with um, aluminum from Vallejo. Give it an idea that he just has some metal slats down over certain parts of the flooring. So that'll look pretty cool. All right, so that's pretty much ready to go. I just have to, well, I'm now ready to go ahead and glue down the base, the bottom of the transporter, get that in place, get the wiring in place, and then I can start building up the transporter on top of it. Uh, and then, um, then I can figure out what I'm doing in the back as far as any other machinery. But I like that look, I like the light blue. It kind of harkens back, it's a basement, but it's, it's a nicely finished basement. I thought about doing some type of, um, weathering or something on it but we don't really see that in the film it looks like he took a lot really good care of of his equipment and the things down in his basement so it's not real dirty or messed up so i think that would be fine as far as this color and i don't want it to take away from the rest of the diorama by um by having too much going on on the on the bottom here but i think that'll be just right all right All right, so some very delicate work and a, a few little mishaps, nothing major, but I did get all four sides of the transporter glued together with five minute epoxy. As you can see, quite a lot of it on the cardboard. So I did uh, one edge at a time. So I glued these two together at this edge first, let it set up. Then I went back and I glued this piece onto here. And then I glued this side only that set up and then I glued the last one on got them all in place so not a bad job it lined up really well um, like I said a few minor mishaps it's kind of hard for you to see it but you can see there's some little streaks of some five minute epoxy back over here there's a little bit here sticking out uh, those are mostly going to be obscured by the the roof and you're not going to be looking low and down and up into it so it should be fine I didn't get any onto the front plexiglass it's nice and clean uh, so we'll let that fully set up and then um, what I'll probably do is I'm debating whether I should glue the top on first and then glue the whole thing on I'll wait and have to see um, I am concerned about the bottom I want to be very careful because you're gonna see any any glue that squeezes out, spills out. Uh, it worked out pretty good on these ones. That size, you can't really see anything bad. Or the, the this metal side here looks really good too. So I'll figure out what I want to do next with it. Um, because what I'm going to have to do is put glue around the entire bottom edge. And I don't have any grooves or anything that it fits into. So it just fits down into one place and I have to center it around the, um, the center part. What I've been trying to do, and I kind of did with the front after I had a little bit of mishap, this one kind of slipped and, and slid along. And that's how I got some glue on the top there. And a little bit squeezed out on that bottom and that middle over there, like I said. Um, but what I tried to do on these ones is I put the glue on and I got it to the point where it was starting to set up. It was getting pretty thick. And then that way I was running a less of a chance of there being a problem. Uh, and I'm not worried too much if I don't have a complete absolute gap seal 
like it would be really hard to go back inside and, and put any more in because it would be very obvious. Um, because once the whole thing is glued down on the bottom and on the top, all of these edges are going to be glued and it's going to be solid. I'm not too worried about it. And since it's with five minute epoxy, that's going to have a nice hold to it. So, all right, I will let that set up and then I will go ahead and probably glue this down first onto the, the bottom of it. And then once that fully sets up, I'll go ahead and glue the final top part on. And then that'll complete the, um, the transporter onto the base. All right, so I'm getting ready to finalize the transporter onto the base and get it all glued together. So I thought of a good idea to line it up since there isn't really any stripping or markings or anything that would line it up, but I need to have it centered. So I need to have this centered. I need to have the edges of this centered along these edges so it looks good. And, um, and plus on the top, on the top of the this piece here it's got to be centered uh, so what I did was I cut some thin brass tube and I glued it into each of the corners I drilled down into the wood between the the styrene sheets just on these two end pieces uh, it really wouldn't work on these because it's just a very thin styrene with a plexiglass so that wouldn't really work so I did it on the parts with the wood and I glued down into it um, the brass the brass tubing. And all I used was a pin vise and my little powered vise, uh, recommended by Augie Gonzalez. Very good tool, I use it a lot. Um, and I did the same thing on the, on the other side. So this is the bottom, this is the top. And then I, I drilled, I laid it in place to kind of line it up. And I put a dab of red paint on the, each one of these. And that's a Lou Del Masso trick. He does that a lot. And I, I really like that trick. So I laid it down and I got little spots where they're supposed to be. A few of them I had to adjust a bit, but it's not a big deal. They're, they're going to be hidden behind the, um, the thickness of the, the walls. But I ended up with the four holes that it's going to fit down into. And I fit it down into it. And I did the same thing on the ceiling. You can see there too, I had to adjust those holes and I have the, the holes there as well. So the beauty of that is that um, when I'm ready, well, pretty shortly here, I'm gonna glue this down. So what I can do is I can just take some five minute epoxy and lightly spread it along the edges of the whole bottom that's gonna go down inside. And then when I, I let it sit for just a few moments to start to set up, then I'm just going to line up the pins and press it down and I know that it'll be in the place where I want it to be. And that way I'm running the, the least amount of risk of getting any overspill or getting it to be crooked and having to move it and then having some smeared five minute epoxy on the parts that you're going to see. And then likewise on the ceiling, then I can just put glue along this edge, do the same thing, line up the pins, press it down in place, and then it'll just be lined up where it's supposed to be. So the only tricky part about the ceiling is that I'm going to have to put the, um, the cooling racks in at the bottom and have those ready to go so they can line up at the top when I'm ready to, to glue that in. So there'll be a couple of things to position, but it should work out good. So, all right. So let me go ahead and get this glued on to the base, and then I'll go ahead and get the ceiling glued on to this, and then we'll finish up getting the transporter attached onto the base. And there is the uh, assembled and glued down transporter. It's all nice and solid in one piece. It's not going anywhere from there. It's attached to the base, of course. 
I have the wiring going underneath for the, the pad that glows blue. Uh, I still have to wire in the wires from this. They control the little flashing lights at the top. Uh, but everything's all connected, nicely done. All right, some very minor little issues here and there, but nothing major. Everything's worked out really good with it. Uh, possibly a few touch-ups that I'll have to do. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, get the figures and kind of mock up how that's going to look when I get those on there as well. All right, and here's a mock-up of the diorama with the two figures and the little control box. Of course, it isn't painted or anything. Um, I actually looked, and it looks pretty cool if he's kind of grabbing onto that rack. I think that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, I had abandoned my idea of damaging the transporter. My main concern was just I didn't want to try working with the broken plexiglass. It just seemed like too much of a hassle. Too many things could go wrong. Um, and I have to break these as well because he damaged those. So I decided to leave it intact. Um, but he is just, you know, as she first sees him before she faints and right before he gets the ax and destroys everything. Um, but uh, that's kind of a cool pose. He's sort of hanging on to it and leaning back a little bit. And she's uh, recoiling in horror at seeing him. All right, but looking pretty sweet. This won't be necessarily the final positions of the figures. What I will do, like I did with the top and the bottom of the transporter, is I'm going to drill some holes in both of their feet, and I'm going to put in some brass rod. I'm going to line them up to where they're going to be, drill down into the base, and there will be just holes there. I won't glue them in permanently, but I will be able to stick them right down into it, and they'll be secured and then I can uh, I can take them off if I want to transport it, transport it <laughs> to a convention. So, all right, looking fantastic. Really happy with how that turned out or how that's turning out. Uh, but now that I have the transporter all glued on and attached together, uh, I just have to start working on the other things as far as painting this figure, painting up that control panel. Uh, I'm probably going to take these wires and wire them right into the control panel. Make it look like there's um, an opening that they go into. And I'll figure out some way to attach them on the side so they'll be even along here as well. Coming down on the side. And then I just have to work on whatever other machinery I'm going to do back there in the back. And getting really close to, uh, to finishing this up. So fantastic. All right, so I'm really happy with the progress that I'm making on the fly build. Really happy with the transporter and how it turned out. So I'll be continuing work on this and uh, should be able to wrap it up, I think, probably in one more video. Uh, I'm also working on my EVA pods from 2001 for my commission. So I'll be uploading a video as soon as I reach a point with that and, um, and continuing to post some videos here. So thank you to all my new subscribers and stay tuned.